Afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us in the Firefish Crowdcast Joining the Dots series. I'm delighted to have James on with me today. Um, James has 15 years experience on the online and digital world and has a really good um, boutique think circles that outsource mar uh, digital marketing to the recruitment sector. But also you have been running podcasts for years um, and the podcast that you own and run is the Marketing Rules podcast as well. So very well versed in this area. Thank you for joining us. I'm really looking forward to sort of it seems like everybody should be having a podcast right now. So I'm really looking forward to going in and finding out what are the benefits? How should people do it if they're trying to? And does it make a success? So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, happy to, to help share whatever anybody else, if anybody's got any questions around this as we go through, I'm happy to ask. Kind of that's brilliant. And anybody that does have any questions, you know, fire in, interact. That's what we love as well on, on um, our, our, our Crowdcast or pop them in the bot and bottom where it says ask a question. And I'll make sure that we bring that into um, the session with James. So let's fire in. Um, so podcasts, um, you know, just now marketing has evolved in so many different ways, so many different channels. And this sort of podcast or Crowdcast without, you know, the audio seems to be the no, the new thing to do. You know, talk me through why somebody should do it, what's it all about, and just give me a bit of a general sort of pros and cons on that. Sure, no worries. The kind of barriers to entry for doing this now is so low, right? So you can kind of get in and start a podcast, start a crowdcast, start video, audio pretty quickly and simply these days. Um, it's not anywhere near the kind of dark art that it used to be. You don't have all the kind of technical know-how to do it. So that's one of the reasons why you can add it to your marketing list. Um, I also think it's a great way to kind of just to talk to your audience as well beyond kind of the written content, right? Uh, yeah, you can do it through video. Uh, but one of the good things about kind of a podcast um, is one, you can transfer video into audio. So you've got the podcast kind of already ready to go. But also it kind of opens up a few more platforms that may well not be uh, accessible to you as a generalist kind of uh, recruiter. And things like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Podcasts, and no other kind of platform. There are even specialist platforms for, for certain types of business where you can kind of, kind of you can focus your efforts as well. So it's a great way to kind of uh, get onto those platforms. If you're not a confident copywriter, I'm the, like me. I'm, a, I'm even though I'm a marketer, I am not a very good copywriter. One little bit. That's why my, I've got a great team behind me. So, I, but I can talk, and I like talking to people, and that's a great way of kind of expressing that kind of a, a, an enthusiasm and getting in front of people and talking to your audience directly. Um, and it's a great way to build your community. You know, you can, a lot of the times we have these discussions, I'm sure you do as well, about how do you build communities and how do you build talent pools and, and those kinds of uh, things. Having this, something that people can follow on a weekly basis, great way of kind of, kind of bringing people, making something stick and bringing people back all the time. And the last one is really about being able to embed your brand position. Now you can talk directly about what you do, why you do it, how what you're talking about, and how that aligns to you know your services, whatever you is you kind of who you recruit for, why you recruit. You can really kind of embed that into that into those kind of conversations. So I think those are the kind of things that really are the reasons why people should be looking at uh, starting a podcast or something that eventually becomes. A and you're right, just like, you know, you've said there's different ways that you would express yourself. There's different ways that audiences want to learn. Um, and I think, you know, I, I hate reading. Um, so I'm, I'm very much more of a virtual and listener. Um, mm -hmm. Well, sometimes listener. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you've got to sort of almost like give each of their audience types something or a way of being able to engage with you. Yeah. So 90% of people tune into a podcast to learn something. That's from uh, podcasthost.com does these kind of surveys every every year around kind of the podcasting communities. And that was one from 2020. So 90% of people listen to podcasts to learn something. So that already tells you what you want to kind of, the majority of your audience are, are, are tuning in for. They're trying to learn something, learn something about you, learn something about, about the market that you, you're operating in, add value basically. Um, I suppose from a recruiting kind of point of view, it's not actually, you don't have to kind of talk about what you do as a recruiter, the recruitment space, it's about the space that you're trying to talk to, that audience you want. They want to learn, they want to know stuff, and they want to listen to it. And with a podcast, obviously, listen to it on the job, your morning run in the morning, on the way to work, if people are still doing those kind of things, on the way home from work, 
you know, or when someone's got kind of a spare five minutes in the, in the garden, they can kind of consume it in their own time when they want to as well. That's the kind of beauty of it. Now, to be honest, like podcasts came in, you know, almost like what, five, eight years ago, right? And then probably I felt that, that. Yeah. yeah, probably. Yeah. And then I felt like they almost sort of disappeared because I, originally I had started doing podcasts before I went visual in terms of the, um, you know, the last what, three or four years we've been doing um, sort of crowdcasts. Um, so what sort of just happened in terms of podcasts going away and then what's, what's really sort of made this surge come back? Well, I think it's like I said, that barrier to entry has mm-hmm. definitely changed. So people can now, every, everyone and their, and their grandmother can, can, can run a podcast, basically. Uh, so I think that's, that's the, the difference. Also, when podcasts first started, you know, you had these big kind of big name podcasting, the Ricky Gervaises, but it was all kind of paid for content as well. It was all kind of gated. That's all kind of disappeared now. You know, you don't have to kind of get through that. Um, but even though it's kind of kind of on the way on the way back, you know, I think people kind of think that if they did start a podcast, it's just adding to that noise, and you know, that's not necessarily correct. You know, you get fifty percent of podcasts never get first past their first episode, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, you're playing a bit of a long game when you're coming into this. Eighty percent never get past episode ten. Okay, so if you can kind of get past that, that kind of hurdles. You basically kind of you're ruling your market at that point because yeah. there's probably not going to be many other people. The majority of podcasts out there are entertainment based. Okay, they're about you know the movies, games, pop culture, um, crime. The one the business ones are usually run by kind of big personality, Gary Vee's, these kind of kind of people. But actually, you probably could drill down into what's kind of if there's anything coming up in, in your specific kind of industry that you're looking to kind of um, infiltrate into. Probably very few, uh, and actually, there's still a lot of space out there for you to get in front of people and talk to them uh, directly and build those communities. Um, I think there's something like I don't know over eight hundred thousand podcasts to a million podcasts or something at the minute. But again, so many of those just don't get past the, the tenth episode, so they just kind of go away. Or sometimes you see them in their series, like they're a series, and, and they they run for fifteen episodes and then that's it, and they come back. So that kind of keeping it regular kind of, you know, we'll come on to talk about that. I guess, but that's, that's how you kind of make it work. Well, it's really interesting, right? I did not know that half of them don't even get past a you know, first episode almost. Yeah. That's the yeah. pilot, isn't it? Exactly, um, yeah. And then, you know, 10 people have maybe, you know, done it and thought, no, I'm not going to go on. And as you said, this is a long term game to get the benefit out of it. So let's look at the do's and don'ts and why that happens. Can you share yes. some stories? Um, so. You need to stay focused, right? You kind of got to have a bit of a plan when you're kind of coming into your podcasting. Um, if you listen to like the, the the marketing rules, it has changed significantly over the over the period that we've been running it, from the artwork to how it's introduced, from me originally doing it, copying other people's podcasts, trying to sound like I'm a big fan of Adam Buxton's podcast, um, and I basically just try to copy that. So it's me wandering out, taking the dog for a walk, speaking into a, you know, into a microphone. And it was terrible. I just, I was awful. <laughs> I can't it. imagine you doing I, it like know, that, James. I, I was, and I was so embarrassed because every time someone would walk past me, I would stop <laughs> and then wait till someone kind of went past. So again, so if I'd have known, or again, retrospect is a great thing, but if I'd have kind of got to, if I could get to where we are now with our podcast sooner and more focused and, you know, then, and, and can we worry what we're in the year two of it, you know, two, two, three. No, so stay focused, know your audience, who you want to talk to, why you want, what they want to hear from you. And that's the kind of keeping regular as well is one of the kind of one of the do's. Um, as I said, you, well, you just what is regular to you then? You know, what so should somebody we, be aiming we for? We release every week, mm-hmm. but every, you know, it kind of doesn't matter as long as people know when it's going to come out. Mm-hmm. You know, so even if you're only releasing twice twice a month, once a month, you kind of stick to it. You stick into a pattern. You know, and so people understand and are aware, and they so your community knows when to expect the next uh, the next podcast. And from again, from our own experience, we can tell if we've had breaks, our listenership drops off slightly. You can see it drop because people are expecting. It. You've got to keep keep it regular to keep those kind of those numbers. Um, I know you don't want to, you won't get kind of too technical, but sound quality is really important for 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 the longevity of a podcast. You know, the amount of podcasts you listen to, these one one episode, first one, where it's just kind of done through the the microphone on on the laptop or something like that, and it's you know you've echo in the background. It's terrible. I mean, 
I've gone through several kind of mics over the time. Um, and, you know, I've kind of got a semi-professional setup now just because that's kind of like pretty nerdy. But, um, you know, that, that kind of sound quality can really preparation. So, for instance, when we started this, you sent me, oh, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about these things. We had a kind of catch up. I do, you know, when we, when we do on, we send a kind of a list of kind of topics we're going to discuss preparation. So, and, and that, if you're first starting your podcast, get a few in the bag first, right? Do some tests and get some kind of, get your kind of hone your craft a little and through do this kind of preparation. One of the things that is really annoys me when I kind of listen to other podcasts is that kind of inauthenticity is they're trying to be something they're not. Like I was when I first started mine, I was trying to be something completely different. Um, and people who, I've even heard people put on almost like fake American accents because they want to try and sound like that kind of a, like American shock jock or something like that. Um, and it's like, that's, I mean, I've met you, you don't sound like that, you know? We, we spoke it, you know, you don't have that kind of accent. So they're trying to put those kind of that authenticity, and that goes a long way. People, remember, you're trying to speak to your audience, so that you have to be transparent, you have to be authentic, and that's what. Uh, and one last kind of um, technical is, is kind of some poor editing. It took me and took us a while to kind of figure out how to kind of put in intros, put in outros, and this, that, and the other thing. Do a little bit of research on that first, because again, that can make the difference. Um, if you've got, you know, uh, a, a Apple laptop, GarageBand works really well for doing those kind of you know, cracking yourself. But some technical things there, but also some stuff around kind of, you know, just being yourself and just trying to be uh, be authentic as possible. Without the, <laughs> Without the dog. Without the dog. And actually, Kathy's just put up a really good question on this because I've tried different ways of doing this as well and I found out what works for, for us. But it's, should the podcast just be one person talking or more like a conversation between a couple? So I find it easier and I think most other people would, if it's a conversation, okay? At trying to fill 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of you just speaking, really, really difficult. It just doesn't work. The only way you'd usually do it is like using a script and then it just sounds like a robot and inauthentic again. So uh, I would suggest if you're starting, if you're going down this for the first time, interview people or have a conversation between you and someone else within the business and kind of talk about the market. And those are kind of things that also kind of we've, we've helped out with and heard. And those kind of work really well. Or two of you, Pick the latest news from your from your sector for that for that for that week. Discuss that. It's a little lot of news, a little roundup. I think it always works better when there's someone else, but so there's less dead air and less people reading from like an auto. I think that's how I would. And Kathy, just to share some stuff. I mean, I've had um, power cuts where suddenly I left my guest online and I was kicked off the machine. <laughs> now, okay, mine are live, slightly different to the podcast that we're talking about. But we create ours into podcasts, so there's a disaster. Well, at least you've got somebody else there. It helps. And um, I don't know, just to add on that as well, Kathy, like we had done things where if it gets more than a conversation between two people, I don't know about you, James, but it starts to then get very scripted again. Like it was almost with one person because you've got to almost ma manage a sort of group of people rather than just having a sort of flowing conversation. So I would absolutely concur with what you're saying there. Yeah, I, yeah I completely, you're right. When it gets to kind of three people, there's definitely like you. You've, you've then got to try and figure out how to give each person their own airtime. Exactly. And it can get very difficult. And that's actually a different skill yeah. to being able to just to talk to someone, you know? Yeah. Good. Kathy said, thank you very much. So thank you for that, James. Yeah. And actually, just while I'm here, I've got another question in from Francis, which I think is that everybody's interested in this is, you know, what is good numbers? You know, like, <laughs> and what what should we be aiming? What's a benchmark to say, hey, this is worth doing? Um. That's a really difficult one to answer. Okay, mm -hmm. but again, because it's a bit of a long game. Um, when we first started, we, I kind of ignored the numbers for the start because we uh, we used it as part of a larger marketing campaign. So it was it was more of something else that was kind of going on. So you know, initially we would get, you know, ten listeners, twenty listeners, something like that. Now that has increased to in, in the in the hundreds, and sometimes the thousands of listeners. But it's taken us two years to get that, and a lot of prep marketing around to get to those. To those, so I kind of wouldn't be too worried about the stats initially. You know, they will go up if you can just get past ten, ten your tenth episode. You're pretty much guaranteed to be kind of like kind of to, to have it. But there's a lot of other work that goes into it. There's a bit of marketing, you know, around it and making sure you're sharing it on social and sharing it to the right groups on social and those kind of get it in front of people and using. You, you know, either your guest network, 
your colleagues and networks to really kind of push it out there, um, which is kind of one of the things how you get. So what is good numbers? I think if you can kind of, if you say right after year one, you've had, I don't know, three to 4,000 downloads throughout the, the total year, I think you're probably doing well for a very small niche little kind of podcast. I think you've done well to get there. Um, more than that, great. A little bit less than that, I wouldn't sweat it too much. You know, I mean, it's still it's still doing a job. I think that's great advice and really helpful benchmark. And one of the other things I would probably add on that, I don't know, you probably do that as well. You know, we have a list in terms of number of views, number of registered, number of you know um, subsequent sort of views of that um, that that sort of episode, and that also shows you what topic was really resonating. What speaker was resonating? Which speakers would you have back? Except no pressure, James. Um, you know, and that really helps you as well to learn every time and home in and what works and what doesn't. Yeah, completely. The, the analytics. So, um, you, you, with Crowdcast, obviously people are sign ups. So you've got a physical kind of piece of data. With us, we don't. We do it on. Um, we host a kind of audio on on what's on a channel called Anchor. Yeah. Um, but we can definitely see kind of per episode who you know a bit of a breakdown of who's listening. Not who's listening, but you know some diversity in there and the amount of kind of downloads and listens and by which platform so when you get really nerd into it you think right we know that this topic does really well on apple we know this topic where it does really well on spotify those kinds of and you can say right well this matt from here he got you know he had ten thousand listens on that because that one worked really well so we'll have him back in a year's time kind yeah. of thing awesome so let's look at that in terms of where can we get value from a recruitment business of using that content? Have you got some good examples? Um, you know, how does how do people go through past that ten episodes and keep positive that this is actually worthwhile? So, I've mentioned a few of them already. So you're playing the long game, right? Uh, so you can always keep that in mind. So, like a lot of marketing that you're going to hear, and also marketers love telling you that it always takes a long time to do something. So yeah, so so stick with us. <laughs> but combine it with other stuff, right? Just don't do it in isolation. Okay, just, you know, some, some of the things that, you know, we've helped the businesses with and, and work really well is when you have the podcast, you've got an art, you've got a blog or something like that as well. And you kind of combine it into like a little bit of a landing page. And then you can kind of almost kind of grab the attention there as a kind of some not really gated content, but you can have your kind of pop up. So that's one way you can kind of drive people to one place, listen to it, read about it um, and gather some kind of gather kind of information and leads. And it also, someone when does someone does that, you know they specifically landed on that page for this reason. So you can kind of reach out to them and say, "Love that you let, you know listen to the podcast or you read the article. Anything we can help? Any more information you need about this, we can help." The usual stuff that is really. Um, the other thing is is what we do and we advise uh, our businesses do is invite on prospects, you know, people you want to work with. Uh, and I'm sure you probably kind of do kind of do the same. But you you know the amount of times we've done this. Not necessarily always converted, but definitely when it comes to kind of we're top of mind when it and you can keep those conversations going. So we invite people on who we want to work with, um, and people. Everyone has an ego, and they love being invited onto something, you know, like a podcast and these kind of things. Um, I do. I was very flattered to get invited on today. So this is you know, so you know, but vice versa, you know, you invite on kind of uh, people we want to work with on, onto ours, or people we know are going to add value to our community and listen to that. Um, in, in the kind of the flip side of that is you can invite on people you are currently working with, you know, to make them more kind of more sticky, to kind of build out the retention within your business as well. So we tend to do a, a lot of that, you know. You know, we haven't got we haven't got loads and loads of clients. We definitely invite clients. And I know other kind of people recruiting recruitment podcasts are exactly the same. They use that as their kind of retention. Um the other thing is is as I mentioned also is leveraging your guests network as well. you the if, if you've invited on someone you want to work with more than likely, they've got loads of other people in their network who you probably also want to work with. So make sure that you kind of give them to on a, on a, on a platter how they should then push this out to the, onto their LinkedIn network, wherever other networks they go. You literally write that out for them and say, look, can you send this out for me? So it's up and live. You know, all your details are there. Feel free to kind of send out to your network and do that a couple of times. Get them. That's great. Um, and final one. Can really I just pick up on that? Because that's so yeah, important. And a lot of people that I see trying to do things and have just forgotten that sort of call to action, make it easy for the guest to go and share, give them the assets to share. And that that's where you get the best return, I think, from a recruitment point of view. I, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, you just kind of got to hand it to them, basically. Yeah. Say, Let's do this. Basically. Do this, do that. Cut, cut and, and paste this and go away you go. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and the last one is is probably the one that's 
trickiest, but actually definitely we see the most return on from us and from the businesses that we work with and consult with on this is aligning this to your offering. You okay. know, so make sure the people you're talking to and what you're talking around, talking about, you know, and I'm not saying talk around, talk about um, recruitment and staffing, etc. But pain points that those businesses are kind of the challenges and align it to how you can help fill those and, and solve those problems and those pain points and align it to that. That is the way that you get the most out of this because you actually you've got something recorded that says we've got this problem, we can solve it. Boom, there you go. It's not a case study, it's a conversation, but you can definitely have a conversation. So that's, I think those are the kind of really, kind of, it's how you get the most out of this, you get the most value out of this and how you can really generate leads from this. Do you know, I'm just thinking in my head there, you know, putting on my recruitment agency owner X hat and thinking, you know, testimonials, case studies, they should be just dead in the water. It should be a live way of, you know, working with a sort of key, how did we solve your development problem in terms of what developers were able to, how did we see that, et cetera. And you can almost turn that, you know, reverse it into something you can use on your podcast, but also have a live sort of view of clients saying great things. Exactly. So um, a great example is, is, it's not a business that we work with, but um, a chap that I have, she's a single man kind of um, recruiter in education. Uh, and he's got a podcast and he uses it specifically because he's not a massive fan of picking up the phone he hates picking up the phone he hates doing those kind of cold calls so he uses his podcast as that tool basically to invite people on interview them get them in, get them on get, get them on on, on on camera or on, on on mic have a chat with them about what they want and then you've already just made that kind of connection yeah. but it doesn't feel like he's selling to them or trying to kind of sell to them. he's interviewing about what their problems are so he was he, he said to me on you know, a couple of occasions he'd rather get someone on spend time building, creating, and managing and running a podcast as opposed to making those kind of cold calls and kind of and those business development calls because he knows he's better at doing the podcast than he is at doing those, and it, but it works, yeah. right? So that's that's how it works for him. Um, so that's, and he's just a guy on his own. So that, he's kind of like supplemented part of his time for something else, basically, which yeah. is which is more, more. The other one, which is a really good um, example, is a finance recruiter. Again, not someone we work with, but the way they, they run their podcast is they rotate it around uh, a different consultant you know, oh. for, every, for, every, for every episode. And so that then they kind of take charge. It's a different host every time, but it's that person talking to a, someone, their client, their potential client, and it rotates around every single. So I, I, it's something like kind of 10 consultants in the business mm-hmm. and each of them kind of get a go. And over the year, they get a couple of, kind of, you know, a couple of podcasts out of it. So that is, as a, from a consultant point of view, they get their own, they get a bit of personal branding, mm-hmm. a bit of content that they can share and potentially another uh, an easy lead because they've invited mm-hmm. some someone on who they want to work with. So it's almost kind of like account-based marketing in action kind of thing there. Yeah, so definitely. yeah, so that's, that's I think, some really kind of, so from a kind of almost a single man to an SME, how you could potentially kind of use a podcast to, to generate leads. Well, that actually leads on quite nicely to sort of the question I was thinking is that, you know, any of these sort of marketing activities as a small business, you know, it's like, gosh, not another thing, you know, so, and that may be a reason why they never get through the pilot. You know, how do you get accountability? How do you share that sort of motivation to keep something going within a, within an SME business? It's difficult. You need someone um, either to drive it internally or you need to outsource it, right? You need someone to, to so the, sometimes not necessarily the motivation to do it. Sometimes it's all the other crap that gets in the way. So like, 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 like today, this is the, the this is the, the front facing bit of, of of the first stage of what you're going to do with this piece of content. Mm-hmm. In the background, we've had a, we've had a call, we've had kind of emails exchanges. You're then going to repurpose this on different channels and and that's the bit that I think some people don't get once they're mm-hmm. moving into this, right? So when we, we you know the interview might last might last half an hour, forty minutes, but then there's another kind of hour or so of editing and doing all the other stuff. And now we're pretty slick at it, but someone coming new to it probably isn't so i think that's the bit that can be demotivating and also with a, a busy desk you know who the hell and a busy business who the hell is going to kind of do that unless you are genuinely really really interested in it. so i think the motivation to do it and interview and get talking to someone i think it's always there. i think recruiters would love that they're always like they're raised on death it's the, the crap behind it the management of it that's the bit that kind of gets in the way um they just want to do the from a recruiter's point of view, you want to have, record, the, record it with a consultant or visual client and then have the final version ready for them to kind of to share. But there's a chunk in the middle that, you know, you know and I know 
takes a bit of time. And if, if it's not going to be done professionally, you've got to do it at weekends and stuff like that. Which, you know, so that's a bit, I think, why it stops people. But if you get over that, you know, there are businesses out there that can do that for you for pretty low cost, right? Uh, way outvaluing the cost you get from kind of releasing the software. You're absolutely right, because if I had to do all of that, it wouldn't happen. Yeah. But I really enjoy sort of, you know, the prepping, the interviewing in terms of oh, getting yeah, I mean, a sort I of nerd, topic well and then all of this. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But the other stuff, that, but... no, um, definitely <laughs> give, give somebody else to do all of that and get it quickly turned around. So I think yes, that's a really exactly. good point. You know, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes on the techni- technicalities because everybody is thinking about let's to go and do it. So you've already mentioned a good mic, right? Yeah. You know, what other things do you really need to have then in order to get this to fly? I think, you know, uh, from starting out, a decent mic. I think that is pretty much it. And I am, um, so I I start off with just like a decent um, USB mic with a kind of a what's called a pop filter. So this thing that's like sitting on here, or the little kind of over the front, you know, to stop that kind of those kind of noises coming in, filters those out. Um, and I think that is where you want to start. Something that's going to filter out any echo that might be going kind of going around you as well. Beyond that, you're fine. You know, you need the ability to record it. But you can do that over Zoom. You can do that yeah. over Crowdcast, right? You've got the audio. You've got the video. You then got to have somewhere to host it, which is Anchor or Libsyn or wherever else you. Um, and the hosting platform basically is also where you upload it, and then that distributes it to Apple and Spotify, for example. So that's the kind of. Um, so those are the kind of things you need, kind of need to think about. Now you can be like me and get completely nerdy and have crane arms, and uh, you can't see it, but I've got an entire kind of podcast desk. Down here with light up buttons. What on earth is a podcast desk? <laughs> so, see that oh, there? right. So okay, that, no, that, I don't have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 that, that's the desk. So, that I can record on there. I've got buttons for sound effects and all kinds of other things on there if I wanted to. And it can have up to four mics. Yeah, very, very, very snazzy. But yeah, I only use part of it. But yeah. you can go that far if you want to go that far. If you really I think the mic is the really kind of important yeah. bit because um, uh, it kind of it drowns out those echoes, and that's the bit that can kind of sound uh, amateurish. Yeah. No, and you mentioned a couple of pieces of software as well because I know that they are very um, helpful for people to know because you can just literally sort of put it upload onto one, and it will distribute throughout all the channels. Completely. So we use uh, uh, Anchor, Anchor FM, um, and you can technically record directly into it from your your, your browser. You can edit it. You can add in because it's connected. Also, because it's connected to Spotify, you can add in music from Spotify into mm-hmm. if you wanted to, which is fine. Um, but it will then distribute to Apple and, and so. But there are lots of those different. If you just Google podcast podcast hosting, there's loads of them out there. So we use Anchor one because it's free and it connects up to the Spotify and it that stuff for you. But you need that really to kind of get out there. That's the place where it's going to get it onto iTunes and TuneIn and those kind of places. Um, you probably want to be looking at something like GarageBand or something like that to do any editing you wanted to do. GarageBand is really simple. We use GarageBand to edit to edit ours. Um, if you haven't got that, there are other kind of very simple tools out there. You don't need anything kind of like Logic Pro. You don't need any fancy ones because trust me, you just never know. You won't use half of it. So those are the kind of core things to do. And a bit of artwork so you know it looks it looks slick when it goes out. No, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. My normal might sort of just to round up because I can't believe that's uh, you know thirty minutes gone on this one topic. Um, I normally sort of go right three things to take away, but I think you've given us quite a lot of the t- tips there. So I'm just going to change that. I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot there a little okay, bit, perfect. but um, you know, I think how would you start to plan out you know the theme or the sort of what your audience wants just to take away because that's going to be a big part of it. If I'm going to go away and start this, how do I actually work out? how I should plan sort of the next six podcasts? Um, so for, I would probably do just just a little bit before that, just find out if there's anything else in your space already, right? Mm-hmm. So if there's anybody else kind of talking about what you want to talk about, any potential competitors doing this, listen to those. What are they talking about, okay? Are they doing it? Do you think they're doing it well? If they are, copy it. Fine, doesn't really matter. If they're not doing it well, you can do it better by probably just getting a decent mic. So know, know, your, know your kind of, do your research first, okay? Um, and then as for those kind of getting to beyond, you know, episode 10, record 10 episodes and then release them, you know, in stages, right? As I said, hone your craft first, because I bet you the first time you do it, you're probably going to do lots of R's and ums and what we call crunch words. Get that out of your system, okay? And then kind of move on to your actual proper 
of things. So get some in the bag, get a bit of experience. Um, and you steal from the best. If you listen to podcasts, then then take what you think you can kind of you can rationally do uh, as for kind of format. Um, but you know, just as I said, just do that bit of research first. Look what's in the market. See if anyone else is doing it, because probably they're not. Right? Yeah. Probably not. Um, and you've probably got something to say. Most recruiters do, and probably people do want to kind of listen as well. You know, so um, go ahead and have a crack at it. Nothing that like sounds that. that sounds awesome. And thank you so much for all that advice. And I think um, in order to get anybody wants to get in contact, usual way, I think we've got your LinkedIn link there in terms right. of just yeah from from Andrew posting on that. So please, you know, get in contact. Um, and thank you so much for sharing all that because you know it can look a lot harder than it really is. It's just about those following those sort of simple rules, and you've got something really quite special that you can build up for your agency. So well done. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's been a great chat today. Yeah, and if anybody wants to know a bit more, then feel free to to reach out and connect. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, we our next show is uh, going to actually address we've we've um, we've looked at the the candidate market flipping from clients back to candidates. So I wanted to, to sort of tackle that and really start to look at advertising and how to really cho- uh, tune in on the best adverts to attract ta- candidates in a candidate shortage market. So we have Michelle Davies from Candidate Source coming on to give us a little bit more about you know making those adverts stand out from the crowd. So please join us for the next one in two weeks time Um, and I look forward to seeing you then but in the meantime from James and I thank you so much thank you very much